In this video, I'm going to show you how you can create Stripe payments that are connected to Airtable records, such that when you collect payments on Stripe, you know there's an integration between the two sites. So let's go ahead and set this up. It's using mini extension. So when you get in here, if you just search for Stripe, so integrate Stripe with Airtable. I have a table that I've already set up. Um, so it's this one right here. Cool. So the first field you'll see is a Stripe payment status Airtable field. So let me open up the table to show you what that is. This is a field that we will use to update the status of that payment. So we'll say, you know, whether it's paid or um, failed, et cetera, a bunch of stuff. So that's a status that comes from Stripe, right? So create a field if you don't have one, single line text, and just select it here so that we can use that to uh, kind of g give you an update of what, the, what that um, payment looks like in Stripe. Cool. Next thing here is product name. So I'm going to choose product title formula here. Then you need a price. So, you know, the idea is these are products in Airtable. And the way we have it set up in this table is that we have a link. So we have a link, and that link represents the products. And then the table that I'm actually using is sort of like each payment, right? So this would be like the user buying this product. So I've set up a total, which is like a roll up field, right? So you can see this to kind of see uh, how it's set up. Uh, and yeah, so pretty much put together, we have a price, we have a quantity, and we have a success URL and a cancel URL. So now let me explain what that is. Let me select them. Uh, okay, cool. So success URL is where the user will be redirected to after a successful payment. So that URL can be whatever you want, right? So possibly a website, possibly an exact portal, uh, an exact formula, an exact, uh, I mean, exact form up to you how you want to uh, represent it because it could be a formula it could have a record id it could be a, an a table uh, sorry it could be a mini extensions form right you can have a mini extensions form formula and just redirect to it here it could be a mini extensions portal it's up to you um, in any case i just wanted to show you what it would be like to have a static url so i just added like this as a static url and then you need to cancel url right because a person being taken to a payment can cancel so you just need to tell us where should we take them they take them to in case they do cancel cool and uh, the situation with this is the exact same thing. You just give us any URL, and it could be, um, it's just a formula, so it could be whatever you want. Cool. So one that, once that's all set up, there's an optional email field. I'm going to set it up here. And that will, uh, so if, if you select an Airtable email field, we will attach that email to the payment, so it's pretty nice. So I, I definitely recommend it. Cool. Currency here, so uh, that's it. All right, so this gets you a formula. Let's create the formula fields. So... And these are old formulas. I'm just going to remove them. So the new formula that we have here is now the payment link for each uh, item, right? So let's say, um, let me create a new record. Okay, and I'm going to select a product here. And by the way, these records that I'm adding here, they could be a record that you're adding through a mini extensions form, right? You can have a mini extensions form where the person is setting up all this information, and then at the end of the mini extensions form, they get redirected to this formula. So this formula field that I have here can be the redirect formula that you use on the form. So what I'm doing here on the admin side could easily just be done by the user who is buying themselves. I'm just showing this without the form, but we will have another video for the form. Cool. So I'll put this in here. The quantity is one. Uh, just basic stuff. Cool. Let's open up that URL. So I'll be redirected to the payment. So I'm in test mode because the API key that I've used is in test mode. I'm sorry, I forgot to mention this. Um, you'll need to set up your API keys, right, for uh, Stripe. So you'll come here and you set up the, the publishable API key and the secret API key. So once you've done that, and, and you'll want to start with test mode. So Stripe gives you two API keys, one for production and one for test mode. Start with test mode, test it out, and then once you're done with that, then you can just update the API keys and then uh, you're good to go. Cool. So I'm going to do this here where um, on the test mode you can do a fake credit card like this. Okay. Okay. Uh, sorry. That's, it, it, it's actually fine. It doesn't really get validated in the test mode. Cool. Awesome. So that creates the payment. We get redirected. So that's just because my redirect URL is mini extensions, but again, you can redirect to anywhere. So if you go to Airtable now, you'll see that the status got updated to paid. So automatically that happens, right? And now let's go find that in Stripe. 
So in order to find it in Stripe, there are a few ways to do that. Of course, you could just take the email and search for that email, right? And by searching for the email, you find the thing. But what if you want to be super exact about what you're finding? What if I really want to find the exact, exact payment that was created by this? Well, you can do that by finding the record ID. So there's a couple of ways to find the record ID, but I'm just going to show you one. If you grab that, rec that URL that I just copied, and you copy the REC part, that's the record ID. So I'm going to copy that over, and I'm just going to search. So what this is doing, right? Um, let me... So it's showing the same result because it's actually finding the same thing, right? But um, if you search from scratch, yeah. So the, the thing that's happening here is this payment on it in the metadata includes this record ID. So let me show you the exact place right here. So because we're attaching the exact record ID, you can see the exact payment in Stripe and kind of cross match that way. Cool. So that's it. Again, you can use this with the mini extensions form. And if you need any additional features in this, please let us know. We'd be happy to build those things.